Welcome everybody to Live Doctors. I'm Dr. Andrew David Schiller and I'm here with Dr. Derek Leroy. Dr. Leroy has invited us into his home to, uh, to film this sequence. He's a professor of endocrinology and diabetes and the chairman of endocrinology and diabetes at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Uh, he's published hundreds and hundreds of research articles, book chapters, and edited many books. He's done some incredible groundbreaking research in the relationship between diabetes and cancer. He's going to speak with us today about type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, obesity, and some of the things that we're seeing on the horizon about diabetes, obesity, and what can be done about it. Thank you very much for being with us, doctor. Thank you. So maybe start by telling our audience a little bit about you and what got you into doing this work you do and if there have been particular influences or role models along the way. So I was in medical school in South Africa where one of my professors influenced me because he explained to me how interesting endocrinology was. Uh, it was a lead in the field in terms of discovery uh, a lot of Nobel Prizes were actually given for work in endocrinology and after my medical school training he suggested that I do research with him and I did a PhD mm. and that led me to continue uh, research for the rest of my career. And the other person that uh, I was involved in, I went to work at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland with a professor Jesse Ross who was was then and now world famous in the field of diabetes. Mm -hmm. And he furthered my understanding of how to do basic research. Mm -hmm. And that's where it took off into the fields that I'm working in. Very nice. Okay. So, um, as some people may or may not know, diabetes is really two different diseases. There's diabetes type 1 and diabetes type 2. So why don't we start with diabetes type 1. And if you could tell our viewers a bit about what is it, what causes it, and who is at risk for that? So type 1 diabetes um, in most countries um, accounts for about 10% of the diabetes that we, look, that we look after. Generally speaking, they start at a younger age. And so we used to call it juvenile onset diabetes. We now call it type 1. And the reason is while the majority of it starts uh, in young age, children, adolescents, etc., it can, of course, suddenly appear at any age later in life. What happens is the pancreas, which makes insulin, um, which responds to uh, glucose, metabolism, uh, etc., uh, acts as a foreign protein, a foreign body. And so the body recognizes it as foreign and develops antibodies which then destroy the beta cell mm. which makes the insulin and secretes the insulin. Mm. So after a period this destruction leads to the individual lacking insulin totally. And until 19, 20, 21, when insulin was discovered and produced, unfortunately type 1 diabetics did not survive. Yeah. Once insulin was discovered and was created and many companies made insulin, we were able to then inject insulin into these individuals and they could then survive uh, rather than succumb to the disease. Um, it's prevalent, as I said, in young people. If you follow them over many years, if they're not well controlled or they have some other reasons, they can develop complications. Mm -hmm. Eye disease, kidney disease, nerve disease, mm -hmm. um, and these are usually very bothersome. Mm -hmm. um, the type 1 diabetes can in fact lead to what we call end-stage renal disease, they go into dialysis and they will need a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the basis of type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. It's treated by insulin. That's the only way you can treat it today. Mm -hmm. There are many uh, areas of research that are now trying to replace the beta cell of the pancreas okay. or replace the pancreas to allow the individual to secrete their own insulin and not have to rely on injections. Yeah. We haven't quite reached that yet. Sure. On the other hand, we have many new insulins that are available that make it so much easier for the type 1 patients to treat their disease. Interesting. They now inject the insulin with pens. They can walk with a pen in the pocket. When they go to lunch, they take the pen out, inject the insulin, 
and have their lunch, uh -huh. which makes it convenient as well. Sure. So it sounds like what you're saying is that over the years, science has developed better ways of treating type 1 diabetes, so it's more convenient for them to have good control of their, their blood sugar. Right.